Hello, and welcome back to Star Wars Minute. It's the daily podcast where we analyze, scrutinize, and celebrate the Star Wars movies one minute at a time. I'm Pete the Retailer from PeteTheRetailer.com. I'm Alex Robinson from AlexRobinson.fun. And I am Stuart Wellington from the Flophouse Podcast. Yay, welcome back, Stuart. Oh, thank you so much for having me. This is a show about Star Wars. It is. <laughs> <laughs> we keep... He, he got it. He, 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 I got it. it out. Yeah, he nailed it. I'm a good guest. I do my research. <laughs> <laughs> so you're talking about Star Wars, mm-hmm. I heard? Mm-hmm. Um, you're, you're like, uh, all the other, you know, all the rel- extended relatives that I see, you know, like, <laughs> so I hear you do a show about Star Wars. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, today, not, not just Star Wars, not just Episode 9, The Rise of Skywalker, but very specifically, Minute 116 of Star Wars, Episode 9, The Rise of Skywalker. Uh, 116 starts with General Pride wondering how all these people got in his room. And it ends with, um, Sheev kind of making a rut row face as, uh, Ben Solo picks himself up off the floor. Hmm. Mm. And, um, mm-hmm. we get, yeah, we get a little bit of, uh, it's, it's going back and forth. The parallel action here going back and forth between the space battle and the, uh, the Emperor's return and, and facing off against Rey. Do you think uh, do you think Space Battles was a alternate title for the Star Wars series? <laughs> space Battles? Hey, I like it. I like it. That would be a good uh, it's like um, a knockoff. Yeah, it's, yeah, it would be yeah. a good the Asylum like, Productions uh, Star Wars yeah. one. Yeah, Space <laughs> Battles. And then just throw the number way up. They're like episode twenty six. <laughs> like start with that. And be like what? Um, so you guys have uh, you guys have seen this movie before, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, mm-hmm. it's true. I once. saw it. I've, I saw it once. I saw it once in okay. the movie theater, so I don't remember everything. But uh, from what I can tell, uh, Palpatine is back somehow, right? Mm-hmm. Somehow, yeah, yes. he returned. Okay, uh, um, and we are joining him, having recently returned. No, he's been somewhat back this whole time. Okay, uh, for most of the movie, he's a little kind of like a like a little dangly frail little puppet old man on a, on like a boom mm-hmm. uh, hiding in his cave. But uh, just last week uh, on our show, he, um, he just kind of sucked all the energy out of uh, Ray and, and Kylo Ren mm-hmm. and uh, used it to restore himself. So now he's like, <laughs> he's hot back. and strong again. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. That's that cool. Been, they, they should have had him keep going and turn into like Schwarzenegger or mm-hmm. something. But yeah. Yep. Or, uh, turn into a Ryan Reynolds or something. Yeah, there you go. Uh, Ryan yeah, Reynolds I mean, would be good at this. I feel like Ryan Reynolds as Deadpool would be like what like a jacked up uh, Palpatine would look like. Yeah, because he's got his little you know witty little he's, phrases. And... Yeah, he's having a good time. Yeah, he's a he's a hard villain to dislike because he's just having such a good time, you know. Yeah, it's true. He's always laughing. Mm-hmm. And... <laughs> jolly. He's a jolly guy. Live, laugh, love. Uh-huh. That's his so, motto. so Richard E. Grant was in the beginning of this, right? Yeah, that is Allegiant General Pride. Pride? How do you spell that? With a Y. Okay. Or Y D E. Oh, like, like Kitty, Kitty Pride. Pride. Cool. Yeah. Okay. So, thank you. Is is there a relation? Is she related? To, is he related well, to Kitty could Pride? Be. I don't know. I think in the multiverse, I think she, he was the father. It's complicated. That are, actually, you a, are you a right Grant now. head? A Richard uh, Grant head? Uh, I, I guess, that, like, I like him. He, I mean, he's good in things. Yeah. I like him yeah. in Spice World. I like him in sure. With Nail and I. I love him in, uh, you know, uh, Can You Ever Forgive Me? What a picture. <laughs> uh, he's probably been in other things that I'm not thinking of. Yeah. Yeah, he's been in surprisingly a lot of things. So you go back and you're like, oh, right. Oh, mm-hmm. oh, yeah, he was in that. Oh, right. I feel like he's well-respected, but like other than with Nail and I, no one, there's no, never seems to be a, oh, yeah, that was the movie. I mean, well, I know how to get ahead of advertising. I mean, but- Stu led with Spice World, which last time we went through his credits, we met, we didn't mention mm. Spice World, and people took us to task wow. for it. Like, Come on, you uh, guys didn't talk about Spice World? Well, and can you, I mean, he got the Academy Award for, he got it for Can You Ever Forgive Me, right? Mm. I think so. <laughs> uh, which is a great movie. If you haven't seen it, great New York movie. Love it. Hmm. It's I never even heard of it. Oh, so yeah. it's uh, Melissa McCarthy. It's based on a true story of a person who uh, was 
uh, to make a little bit extra money, started forging uh like letters from famous people like forging letters from famous authors and uh, selling yeah. them it's like a uh, drama i remember kind of yeah a, i mean there's some it's huh. a little you know it's a little funny but it's also a story of a kind of uh unlikely i don't know if i'd say unlikely friendship but a, a friendship between two kind of desperate people played by melissa mccarthy and richard e grant and it's great huh. and it if you're a fan of like movies that are set in like 90s new york i feel like it it hits that huh. that spot for you. I like so that. Star no, Wars. Yeah. Star Wars nominated <laughs> nominated best supporting for Can You Ever Forgive Me? Who do you lose to then? Know. Um, when I am now don't, don't make me flip my computer. <laughs> uh, winners and nominees. Let's see. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Awards. Awards. Oh well, yeah. Best dude. picture, director, yeah. actor, actress, supporting actor. Um, oh, he was up. Uh, he he. Also, also in the running, but did not win. Uh, Sam Rockwell as George W. Bush in Vice. Mm, okay. <laughs> also in the running, but did not win. Sam Elliott as Bobby Maine in A Star Is Born. Oh yeah, he's good in that. When he turns also around, crying, running. it's great. Mm. Also in the running, but did not win. But featured in this movie, Adam Driver in oh. Black Klansman. Mm. Oh, he split the Star Wars vote. Then. Mm -hmm. That was that was <laughs> um, yeah. That's that's why. Yeah. <laughs> But the the winner uh, was uh, Mahershala Ali for uh, Green Book. Oh so. uh, no, Green Book. <laughs> okay, <laughs> well, whatever. Um, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. I like the guy. He's cool. Um, so what's the? There's a little. There's a little no. The footnote thing here. I'm not gonna. I'm not just gonna read Wikipedia on the air. Yeah. So yeah. you're. Um, uh, so you do. You described what happens in this minute, but I think you forgot certainly the highlight for me. Which mm. is, we get the return of a little dude named Babu Frick. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, no. Are you guys split on Babu Frick around here? Oh, no. No, no, no. We, we all love pro. Babu Frick. Yeah. Okay, good. Um, <laughs> good. Yeah, so let, let's, <laughs> let's start there. Space battle stuff is where we lead off. We get yeah. um, um, Richard E. Grant, General Pride, is, is freaking out because he's like, what's going on? Where did all these people come from? They don't have a Navy. Navy. And uh, his... his Tenant, I think, Francis Griss. Mm, cool. Cool name. Francis Griss, played by Jeff Francis. Um, Do you think he ever got confused? Because his name sounds kind of like his character's name. Yeah. Or do he insist on <laughs> that, do you think? It's like a Tony Danza thing, where they're like, if we call you something yeah. else, you're not going to respond. So mm, you just have yeah. to make your character's mm -hmm. name Tony. Well, I thought he only went out um, for roles that were similar right. to his own name, because <laughs> yeah. he'd be too confused <laughs> otherwise. <laughs> um... But uh, yeah, uh, Jeff Francis um, was is best known to and and uh, again we we hear back from our British listeners every once in a while when we talk about British TV stuff. But yeah, uh, like late eighties, early nineties, I think there was a a. a uh, it's funny because I was about to say African American, but it's not because it's British, mm, but a yeah. black British um, sitcom, um, which which was. Like in that kind of first, you know, the way that we had in the like kind of late '80s, early '90s, we had a good kind of strong wave of of uh, sitcoms featuring, in our case, African American casts, and this was kind of similar thing in the in the UK. There's a show called Desmonds, which apparently was okay, uh, was was popular, ran for several years, had a spinoff. He was on a couple of episodes of that too, um, but he was one of the mains on that, and that's that's where everybody would know him. Oh, from. Okay, cool. It must be um, weird because, you know, every now and then, like when like Carrie Russell shows up, we're like, oh, it's so distracting having someone that we. So to right. us, it's just like, oh, yeah, it's just some imperial officer. There are people in England are like, oh, look, it's the guy from oh, Desmond. Yeah. As the yeah. guy off Desmond. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, I'm trying to think of who the equivalent of like, because it wasn't like the main guy, but like, well, like one of the supporting characters from, you know, like Living Single or Martin or something mm -hmm. like that would show up in the movie. You'd be like, oh, hey, it's that guy. <laughs> Is that the guy from Living Single? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um but uh yeah they're they're aghast that like all these people showed up they're not they're not a navy they're just people they're just people they're just, they're people. just people yeah and that should have been you know the end of the war they should have been like yeah. well, what? I, we can't just fight people they're just, just people, people. Yeah, they're, they're just us. people living in the moment not a cell phone in yeah. sight um, <laughs> i think exactly. while it's very heartwarming that the people have shown up i hmm. can't help but feel like a a huge fleet of civilian aircraft would be pretty easy pickings for several thousand star destroyers. And, uh, but like, wouldn't the empire basically make mincemeat out of them 
theoretically even an, if, even, an even armed if at, and even organized if at, force. Yeah. yeah. Even if at right. first they're surprised, like as the battle went on and the Imperial discipline was, was, you know, I feel like the, the human, the, the humans would all be killed. The, the good guy, the, the people would have a lot of casualties in that situation. Hmm. Well, maybe they do. I mean, are you, are, are you in a simpler form? Aren't you describing the, you know, American revolution or like the Vietnam war or something like that, where it's like, well, if we just throw a lot of kind of, you know, people with, with nothing to lose, but a lot to yeah. fight for against, you know, a, a kind of organized uh, well, and yet perhaps I think we're overlooking army. a couple of elements of those two examples, but that's okay. <laughs> There's no like <laughs> home field advantage. Here, there's not no. people defending their homes. There's not. <laughs> yeah. There's not, not a long term totally. conflict. It's just an immediate battle going on. It's, We're not talking uh, no, about just, uh, former commissioned officers that are now leading these revolutionaries. Yeah. You know, just purely, uh, just you know, simplified down, distill it down to the basics. Purely out of context. This is exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, and it's kind of <laughs> operating under the like anime element of like. Well, they got the power of heart and friendship, so they're going to win this fight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. They're so sincere. How can they lose? Mm-hmm. Exactly. They're like Linus. The uh, but yes, then we see a Y wing fly in and doing good stuff, and I love seeing a Y wing doing good stuff. It, oh, it exactly. warms my heart. And uh, and we get but, and, and then, we get like a little we get a little Star Warsy music swell here, right? I couldn't remember yeah. what uh, what whose theme it was, but it remind it's a, a space battle song. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's good. It's like here's a Y wing. Here's the Star Wars music. You you love this stuff, right? And it, it totally hit me right spot. I got it. And then it keeps going because then it's like, oh hey, well, it kind of goes back and forth because the dialogue is is real corny. But um, <laughs> are you talking about um, so long space trash? Oh, so sorry, long. sky trash. Sky trash. Sky <laughs> even not in space. Space trash makes sense because there's stuff floating around. There's no sketch sc- trash in the sky. Well, there is. Look at all these Star Destroyers. Am I right? Yeah. 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 They're, they're sky trash, all right. Um, well, because they're in the yes. atmosphere. She can't call them space trash because they're in the atmosphere. So she has to say right, sky right. trash. And she's saying that over what? Like some kind of general comms link? Or is that just a general personal? Comms link. Is that a yeah. personal like message to uh, Oscar Isaac's character, Poe? Poe Dameron? Is that, that's his name, Poe right? Poe Dameron, yeah. Okay. I'm, Dameron. I'm assuming that it's like she put that on main intentionally knowing that he would respond. Yeah. He's like, he'll notice this and I'll do it. Like, I'll talk to everybody like, so long, Sky Trash. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, maybe she's he'll like notice turning. me now. She's like turning. Yeah. So long, Sky Trash turns to channel two. So long, Sky Trash yeah. turns to channel three just to make <laughs> sure then, that he hears it. Some, right. One of those. Uh, one of those. Uh, um, and then, yeah, Poe is like, who's that flyer? Which is a weird... Not pilot. Mm. I don't know. It's, it's an odd. Uh, all of this is just weird. Feels like it was oddly cobbled together. Then she says, "Take a guess, Spice Runner." Another, uh, I, another dig. Where, yeah, Richard E. Grant should have been like, "What? I was in Spice World." Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, take a guess, Spice Runner, and then he gets. He's super excited, and and, and we get to see Bob. Now I think Babu Frick. I could be wrong. But I know I've heard this story, and I don't I don't remember where from. That um, I don't I, I think that the Zori Bliss thing, but she was meant to show up again. This is Carrie Russell Zori Bliss? And she was meant to and show up again. She the whole was time. earlier. She showed. She was in the movie earlier, right? Yeah, yes. uh, an exclaim okay. of Poe Dameron's. Okay, right. okay. And she used to. They used to be in a gang together and all this stuff. And cool. Um. So, <laughs> but the planet that they were on blew up. And we're supposed to be like, oh, she maybe she died, maybe Babu Frick died, and that was the thing when when apparently they showed an early, uh, JJ showed an early cut of this to Spielberg, and he was like, well, what happened to Babu Frick? Like, did he die on that planet? Like, you gotta bring you gotta bring Babu Frick back. Like, that was his like number one note was just like, you can't kill Babu Frick. Everybody loves him. And I so mean, I the guy's Frick, right. Yeah, <laughs> Spielberg's right. <laughs> the the uh, you know. Logic of, you know, whatever, like, but, you know, the, the same way that we saw in the last movie of Porg showing up in the Millennium Falcon cockpit, and I was a little bit like, ah, eh. and like here I'm like, Babu Frick shows up in the cockpit of a Y-Wing, I'm like, ah, oh, look at that guy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, Doing like a Garfield, stick him up, hang in there type thing. Yeah. So were you going to ask they, if Babu Frick is CGI, like put in there? 
I'm pretty sure that they just threw that in there yeah, at the I, end to I agree. appease Spielberg and and Oh, you don't think that, do you think that was they know that was mocap though, right? <laughs> Somebody was mocapping oh, Babu Frick the whole time, right? <laughs> it was yes. Yeah. It was what's your name? Not not Shirley Jackson. What's the um um Moaning Myrtle? Yeah, I forgot her her real name, but she's she's in a bunch of stuff. She was the voice of it, but uh Yeah. She's the voice of Babu good. Frick? Yeah, Moaning oh, Myrtle is Babu Frick. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> deepening my crush <laughs> <laughs> um but uh so uh, let me uh, guys real quick, quick moment if, if i went on a date with her i think i would last five minutes before i ask her to just switch over to the babu frick voice exclusively <laughs> and the date would be yeah. over and i would be you know i have to go home in the rain but that's fine it's I can't, I'm sure I can't by this point. It. I can't deny. I'm myself. sure by this point she goes into a date assuming that that's gonna yeah. that the person's gonna ask. So she just goes in like, hey, hey. <laughs> yeah, hey. she's like, gotta check through this guy's socials to make sure his <laughs> AVI isn't uh, isn't a Babu Frick picture. <laughs> yeah, you get the the Babu Frick weirdos, of which we are all. Mm -hmm. the um, kids. <laughs> um, yeah, su surprising. I think she's like. I mean, we're all rough within within spitting distance of each other's age, I think. And she's about 10 years older than us, I think. She's, mm -hmm. she's um, she was held back a lot of years so that she could <laughs> yeah. go to Hogwarts, right? All that moaning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I did. I, uh, while we we're talking about Babu Frick, I did want to bring up the, the Star Wars Rise of Skywalker expanded edition novelization by New York Times bestselling author Ray Carson. Mm hmm. Um, <laughs> has a, a line that threw me a little bit during this because it's but Poe sees you know he's he's feeling down everything's falling apart literally but then the 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 everybody shows up Zori Bliss is there and he's like Zori it is Zori and he gets excited and then he hears over the comm like hey hey and he's like was that Babu Frick and then he says this day kept getting better and better wow so like, <laughs> yeah <laughs> I mean, I guess from a certain point, like it had, like it had, it had probably hit a low a couple minutes ago when he thought nobody was going to show up. Then it, from there, it, it is, I guess, getting better and better. But to make it sound like this is like Poe Dameron's best day ever, when it's like, <laughs> oh yeah, well, yeah. a lot of people I know just uh, died, and yeah, the, there's an evil roasted. wizard down there who's threatening the galaxy. But like, at least my my ex and that that uh, cute guy that I know who fixes my robots, at least the they're little puppet, okay. mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, I think he's that's... more excited about Babu Frick than, <laughs> than yeah. Zori Bliss. I mean, I would be way more excited to see Babu Frick than one of my exes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and she is. I mean, I, I might be reading into this a bit, but it does. She she is a little bit clingy in this. Uh, you mm, know, when, yeah. When, hey, when I mean, I haven't read up. the novelization, so I don't know. <laughs> yeah, hmm. in the in the movie within the movie itself, she also has like. She's sort of like, hey, come, come with, or I, like, she wants to like rekindle it. And Poe is just like, hey, that's, that was a long time ago. And she's, she's I know, I know Poe is really firm about his own boundaries. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, he wouldn't, he wouldn't play with that. No. <laughs> um, but yeah, so the, the Y Wing, Babu Frick, all good stuff. Um, should we are we supposed to? to the, are we supposed to inf play. infer that Poe could see Babu Frick in the cockpit? Like, Bobby Frick pops up and he's like, hey, that he can see Poe in that. <laughs> That's like actually right a really good question. Him. I'm assuming, yes, we are to imply that he can see okay, Bobby yeah, Frick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Got it. He's like like a kid in the backseat, like, waving at it, like, like hey, Poe, Poe, Poe. Like, he's, like, sitting there, like, waving, and he's like, it, it, we're, we're it, like, it, we're not in space, but he's very far away. He can't hear you. Now... <clears throat> I understand uh -huh. that it makes sense for Babu Frick to show up in Zori, Zori Bliss, Zori in, Bliss. in her cockpit. But how much cooler would it have been if Babu Frick showed up in his own cool, weird little ship? <laughs> Ooh, yeah. That would have been Or cool. like, like a little miniature version of a, an X-Wing or a Y-Wing or something like that. Or you know, even like. weirder, a much bigger ship that he pilots. <laughs> I was going to go that way. You see suddenly this new, dark, evil-looking ship, and everyone's all like, oh, and then they cut to Babu Frick. Hey, hey, <laughs> hey. hey. <laughs> uh, every, people like a, like a big truck horn. Lost their minds. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's the way to go. So when they the novelization came out after the book was, after the movie was already released... 
I believe. I think we looked that up once, and it was within... Okay. I, uh, we're assuming that they had to make a lot of changes as the editing happened. Right, okay. And there are some things that are, you know, reflected... Uh, some things that seem like last minute, kind of like, well, how am I going to solve oh, really? this? Like, from a writing point of view. <laughs> oh, in this so movie? Bobby, <laughs> some things seem like slapdash kind of last minute. I know. Oh, I really? Know, oh, okay. You know, it's un unseemly for a, for a uh, you know huge budget major studio movie, but uh, so the, so right. Babu Frick's appearance at the end of the novel was because he's in the movie, not because of the not because of his massive popularity. Out, it's not like the movie came out and they're like, "Well, we didn't know Babu Frick was going to be this popular. Let's let's beef up his role in the book." They just kind of that was already. Right. It's just exactly the now same. I, it's in the movie. I think if anything, it's uh, I, there are a couple of scenes. Um, I don't know if they were filmed, but cut. But there's he does have a couple more scenes in the book. Zori Bliss and Babu Frick both. I think they, they spend a little bit more time on Kajimi. So now, did you guys go? What was that? There was like a Star Wars cruise experience. Did you know about this? Did you go Let's on see. this thing? We mm -hmm. did not go on it. A friend of we heard about it. A friend know. of mine went on it, and he came back with one of those like life size Babu Frick stand up doll things. And you know yeah. what? <laughs> it's incredible. <laughs> <laughs> he says stuff. Oh, he's great. I love him. It was worth the like six thousand dollars or whatever it was. I can only assume thing. it was it was no. uh, exorbitant, but you know what? It's worth it. At the end of the day. <laughs> <laughs> At the end of the day, you got your own Babu Frick. Mm -hmm. there. Do you think it's basically just like the skeleton of the baby Yoda, and they just put the oh good put question. the baby the Babu Frick kind of you know skin flesh <laughs> skin yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, they. It's basically uh, Yo Baby Yoda wearing a Babu Frick skin suit. Is mm. is what the toy is. So, yeah. yeah. Did they? Did they ever do a team up between those two guys? Mm. They both showed up in the Mandalorian, but I don't recall them actually being in the same scene together. Uh that's why well, <laughs> same those were guy. other. They just, they share other... a skeleton, so that makes sense. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, they, we signed it out. You <clears throat> couldn't get it. Um, I don't. Th that was other members of Babu Frick's race. I don't think right. Babu, actual Babu, Babu Frick was there. There were like three or four other Babu Fricks. Mm, mm, okay. Um, okay. Apologies to the members of that race because I cannot remember what they're called, and I'm just going to call them Babu. Fricks. And we don't have. Yeah, we don't have a. We don't have a. There's probably no resources online or anything that would in inform us of this. <laughs> or I don't think I anyone just put down the book that says exactly what they are in there. Like, uh, <laughs> Uh, you don't have to look it up. We're on here. <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, but uh, yeah, in the meantime, uh, Ray and the Emperor are uh, fighting it out, duking it out a little bit. Uh, well, no, not, no not quite yet. No, yeah, they're not like, yet. Sorry, Ray is still up, knocked right? out. They're just waking up. Yeah. Spoiler alert. Yeah. The Emperor is showing off his new body and talking to his uh, the arena full of constituents that he's got there. I think this, his, his like draining their force and coming more back to life. Like now he's like, look what you have made. Like uh -huh. he doesn't look different enough to how he looked pre energy draining. You know what I mean? Like he should what? look like young. He should look like, uh, like episode well, one sheave. You know what I mean? He should be like, Oh, I'm, I'm going to follow my life I, with great interest. Yeah. I've <laughs> yeah. heard various conflicting reports, but, uh, uh, it seems like he was supposed to be Matt Smith at this point. And then oh, that, that fell apart. Oh, because he was oh, making sense. something else. Yeah, or like the same way that uh, um, Gary Oldman was supposed to be General Grievous, but then he kind of like read the script and he was like, um, "I have a some kind of conflict." Yeah, he was I like, think. "I'm not a four armed robot." <laughs> yeah. I think um, what happened was originally the young Palpatine was supposed to play a bigger part, like in the flashbacks to showing Ray's parents and yeah. stuff. But then once it was just going to be this tiny little thing, Matt Smith's like, well, I'm not going to come just to be basically yeah. a cameo in the film. I, you know, right. that was what I thought I remember being the case. But he, something like that. he had to yeah. make Morbius. OK, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> come on. Well, it was it's not going to make time, itself. So. And yeah. the thing is, honestly, <laughs> he's great in Morbius. <laughs> <laughs> they should so bring that back i hope they bring that back in the theaters that would be a morbius. i never <laughs> yeah. got a chance well it's it. that's never happened in the history of morbius so might as well try <laughs> uh 
I will say, ever since PTR put it in my head that this is basically a Harry Potter thing, even, even aside from the Moaning Myrtle connection, uh, mm -hmm. I can't unsee it now. Now Palpatine just seems like Voldemort, and this all just seems mm -hmm. very uh, Potter-esque. And his little followers are like Death Eaters, and it's clearly shot mm -hmm. uh, on location in a really cool set they built. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Yeah, it's the same the same set. They just reuse some of the Harry Potter sets. Yeah, <laughs> like oh, do you have one of those rooms where everything is kind of glowing blue a little bit, but dark and it's hard to see things? Oh yeah, yeah, we got plenty of those. I feel like they took the wrong lesson from other big blockbusters of you know our current era, where they're like, you know, the best way to have a conclusion, just have everyone fight it out in a nondescript digital location, like the yeah. blandest, yeah. grayest, or in this case, slightly darker location and it sucks <laughs> i guess we should and, be glad they didn't fight an army of cgi monsters gray cgi monsters the way every yes, mcu movie right. tends to uh, yes. well, tends to end but this is the other thing where it's just like oh let's just have them like have an energy face off like yeah that's the other like they, they can end in one of two ways either like army of swirling you know gray shapes or just like energy like wizard battle energy yeah. versus energy and one overpowers the other and then there's an explosion Whenever I see scenes like this, I'm B. always I'm always so like distracted by the meta of imagining them in the room and Daisy Ridley just standing on a stage sound stage going like ah, ah, you know just right. standing yeah. there and having to act like there's lightning going around her and everyone just sitting there watching guys eating a sandwich and you know like it just <laughs> seems so like a weird thing to be doing showbiz huh yeah it always mm -hmm. reminds me of that uh, that like behind the scenes shot from the uh, the the original Dungeons and Dragons movie where like Jeremy Irons is giving mm -hmm. this big performance monologue and then the moment it's, they say cut he just like wanders off it's so funny <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> um, but yeah he's doing a um well, I had, I had two things for the for the, the the emperor part. One is um, he looks a little bit Grandpa Munster to me by the end of this. Yes, he's doing a little bit like he he's kind of making a, a face and then it kind of changes, you know, the way that Grandpa Munster would have this like kind of like scowl thing. <clears throat> and uh, and once I saw it, I was like, hmm, yeah. Now I'm gonna keep I'm gonna keep thinking of that because he is mm. he is a grandpa. Yeah, in this. he is a grandpa. <clears throat> Oh, and kind of, um, kind of like a Grandpa Monster's like a vampire or something, right? So he's he's kind of yeah, like a vampire. Yeah. yeah, he's a vampire grandpa. Mm -hmm. Ooh, grandpa. Now I want to recast Star Wars with all at, <laughs> with all monsters of uh, people. I mean, Herman Monster, right. Darth Vader. That's pretty direct, yeah, right yeah. there. Yeah, that's a one to one there. I now I I do want to hear. I can't think of it, but. Uh, I would like to hear a lot of the classic Darth Vader lines, uh, but in a Fred Gwynn kind of Herman mm -hmm. Munster voice. Do you think people would have been mad if in Return of the Jedi, <laughs> Luke talked about Vader's... Or if we can't afford it. What? <laughs> John Shuck, yes. If, if, do you think people would have been mad if Return of the Jedi, uh, Darth Vader took his helmet off and Fred Gwynn was, the, was Anakin Skywalker? <laughs> I wouldn't uh, have been mad. <laughs> yeah, no, some people would have been mad. Some people would have been elated. Yeah. He would like, sometimes death is better <laughs> before he dies. <laughs> So, <laughs> um, like they're like, help me take this mask off, and she tries to take it off, but it, like spins his head around a little bit, like boop boop, mm -hmm. and he's doing like kind of you know a whole, turns into a whole physical comedy bit. I'm I'm loving this oh, right man. now. I love it too. Um, but then I had a question too, where um, uh, right. this is back to the space battle for a second, and I not to get political, which is it's about to, but um, <laughs> oh, do boy. um, what's the deal with those clowns in think, Washington? <laughs> but do you think that like the 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 kind of you know insurrectionists like January six people? Do you think they look at this part and they're like, oh yeah, that that's like us? We're just like, oh, it's not a navy; it's just people. There's a bunch of people storming up. Like, do you think they relate to the the resistance slash rebellion uh, in this? And do you think they're like, yeah, that's that's like <clears throat> us? We're we're just a bunch of people showing up to do what's right and take out the evil. Uh, I mean, the answer is yes, right? I mean, people that yeah. uh have weird firmly set beliefs like that will uh find uh th like they'll have confirmation bias with any media they adjust <laughs> they, right. they'd have to or else they're not going to be able to watch any anything or any tv which maybe they don't maybe that's what makes them into extra weird dudes yeah i mean i, I, I this is me looking for looking for understanding and figuring out well, what <laughs> sure. are, 
Yeah. Let me put myself in their shoes. Are they watching this? And thinking that way? Alex and I talked about this a little while ago on, when uh, about with Les Mis. I'm like, who are they rooting for here in Les Mis? Are they? Yeah. Um, but like similar here, where I'm just like, all right, are they like, they see themselves as that. Does everybody see themselves as the resistance, as the rebellion? I think that's. Well, it's like when, uh, when like all the like movie stars and celebrities were like, I loved Parasite. What a great movie. And I'm like, oh, you're the bad guys in Parasite. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, exactly. I feel like that's both the beauty and the flaw of Star Wars is that it's it's very easy to be able to cast yourself as the good guy no matter what you're because everyone feels like there's some jerk trying to put them down. You know what I mean? Right. Whether mm -hmm. it's the government or your boss or whatever, the man. So that's the and then similarly, you have the same way where people also empathize with the Empire. You know what I mean? Obviously, clearly, all these edgelords are like my other car is a Star Destroyer. So mm -hmm. it's like you get right. the best of both worlds. You get to identify with the edgy badasses. And then you also get to identify with the rebellious people who are trying to get rid of said. Mm. I mean, people. I feel like everyone sees Darth Maul ignite the second half of that lightsaber. And they're like, that is me. <laughs> <laughs> totally, like looking yeah. in a mirror that is my dude mm -hmm. yeah so uh yeah oh man uh, we got super nice. political here we talked about Bobby I know, Frick. close the political book i just wanted to you know just yeah. try to put myself in somebody else's shoes do an understanding sure you know, yeah that's, that's important yeah. um but uh if i'm getting to january 6th it must be an amount of notes for this minute did you guys have anything else specific to this minute or uh Stu, can you come back tomorrow uh, what's the next minute? Oh, yeah, the next minute looks exciting. I can't wait. <laughs> Let me, spoiler alert, more of the same. Mm -hmm. Um, but uh, if Frick, you can, unfortunately, yeah, yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> like we're, we're done pretty much with Babu Frick. Is this the last time we see him? Is this the farewell, or do we see him celebrating with the rebels uh, uh, back on the base or something? Yeah, does he get to do probably a yub dance? Yeah. Mm, I don't know. Probably not because they probably wouldn't have bothered to CGI him into a crowd. Oh, we'll see. I'm going to we'll say see. no, but I mean, my guess would yeah, be no. Yeah, I, I think that was it for Babu Frick. That was just okay. a little like, hey, he survived. But, um, kind of the opposite of a Poochie, you know. Bye-bye, mm -hmm. Frick. Um, but uh, yes, if you uh, listeners, viewers, what have you, if you're just listening, don't forget you can view. Go to StarWarsMinute.com slash YouTube, and you can watch us on YouTube. Uh, if you're just watching on YouTube, hey, subscribe to the podcast. Uh, StarWarsMinute.com will get you no, uh, no matter where you want to go StarWarsMinute.com will get you there and um, we'll meet you back here tomorrow for a brand new episode Star Wars of Minute Star Wars Minute, Minute.